plant a flag on lathe. No. <laughs> no, we're never... Did I actually turn off tourist contracts? Because I swear I haven't seen a tourist contract in ages. I I sort of feel like doing a quick rescue con uh, rescue mission. Why don't we just... Uh, wait, how much time do I have? Uh, no, we've got a lot of time. Well, we've got half an hour anyway. Explore Ike. Don't we have a like, Kerbal on Ike? Well, no, that's the Dock 2 vessel. This is that. Oh, I actually picked up that contract. Why did I pick up that contract? So it wants that. Okay, survey scanner, thermometer. Okay, let's. Okay, I have this. I guess that's what that probe was for. Okay, so we have that probe already around Jewel. Let's maneuver it so that it gets to that weird orbit that contract wants so we fulfill that. Clear that out of the way. We already scanned Tylo after all. Okay, where's the contract orbit then? Oh, I guess we have to be in jewel space or something. Yeah, okay. That's gonna be a pain to get to from here, but... Try. We've got 1,955 meters per second to do it. Well, I mean, I want to make sure viewers are sufficiently engaged and viewers will understand the shuttle. Um... I don't know. Will they have the same response to my own shuttle? Yeah, I know. I don't like imitating, but... People like the imitations, so... And I always wanted to do a shuttle series anyway. I probably wanted to do a direct run through of all the shuttle missions, sort of like a continuation of the mission profile series, but just for shuttle missions. I might do that as part of this plan. Though the result of the shuttle missions might not be quite the same. In other words, since I'm not going to be putting some of the other pieces in, I don't want to speed run. It's tough to speed run RO. No, I will learn the robotics as soon as we finish the tech tree. That I'll, that's in my plans for this series after we finish the tech tree. That'll be a major, or at least an, as soon as we unlock all the robotics. Oh sure. Um, so initially, from STS one through nine, it was just. The order of the missions. But eventually, I guess we'll just leave it there. Um, there are a few things that happen. First of all, they realized that their when they planned the mission would not be the order that the mission would be launched in, right? So you would end up getting STS 12 before STS 10 and stuff like that. Okay? The second thing was Somebody involved in management was had a fear of the number 13. Somewhat justified because Apollo 13 happened. Um, there was that too. So they wanted to avoid the number 13. Um, so they came up with this alternate naming convention. Because in any case, the missions were not going to be launched in the order that they were planned. So the alternate naming convention was... The first number was going to be uh, referring to the year of the mission. So... Uh, if it was a 4, that would be 1984. If it was 5, 1985. 6, 1986. Those were the only th the years that it was ever used during. The second number was going to be the launch site. The 1 was for Cape Canaveral. 2 would be for Vandenberg. Vandenberg was never used. So the only numbers that were ever used were 41, 51, and 61. And then the letter was the order it was planned in. Or the other order was budgeted in. Which is not the order that they were launched in. Again, that was the whole point of coming off a different system was because they knew that it, the stuff would not be launched in the order that it was planned in. And of course, they didn't want to change the number like after they were practicing the mission, right? The crews that practiced the mission, STS or whatever it is, they're not going to suddenly change the number when they have to launch the mission because they realize that, oh, well, we're not launching in that order, right? So they, they want to keep the numbers the same. But yeah, it was just a mess. <laughs> and 
uh, there are times when STS-61s launched before, like the last in this series was 51L, Challenger, the disaster. But there were some STS-61s launched before that. So... And then after Challenger, they went back to the old... They, they just went with numbering them. So that started off with uh, STS-27, or is it 26? Anyway, after that, they uh, just numbered them in order of when they were planned, but this is not the order they were launched. Yes, there's an STS-26, so that was the return to flight. Um, so, like, STS-107, which was the Columbia disaster, actually happens after a whole bunch of uh, missions that were numbered higher, right? The previous mission to that was STS-113. So, the numbers are all out of order. Until the very end, because they're just not doing that many more missions. Okay, we're in... Uh, it's not gonna show me that target orbit unless we're focused on Jewel, really. Okay, so... We're going around this away. It wants... This is so complicated. Well, we're not doing this. Uh, unless we get Tylo's help. I just don't think this has enough. Maybe... If we really just boost it up a whole lot. And then tilted it from there. Oh... Um, that's manageable, I suppose. Maybe we should go even further out. Oh, 1,629? Really? <sighs> yeah, I don't think this can do it. I think we should just send it to a different moon to scan. Well, Blender's free, Nezadam. You don't need to get it from school. You can download it anytime. The latest version is probably better. Probably. Yeah, you can even get it on Steam, which is hilarious because uh, Steam thinks I've got like thousands of hours on it or some ridiculous amount. Um, but that's because I just leave Blender open on the off chance I want to do something with it. Yeah, I still right-click stuff too. Um, and the the big trouble is there are some plugins that don't work in 2.8, like the thing to export stuff into X-Plane 11. That only works in 2.7. So then I have a problem where I have to remember how to do it in 2.7 and then go back to doing it in 2.8, so that's a bit of an... I mean, it's like, uh, this kind of update is like once in a decade kind of thing. It's also into- but one reason that I ultimately got into Blender is because there are so many tutorials on it. Oh, uh, that's too much. That's too much. Seems like an unnecessarily large correction. We don't really want to go into- Maybe we can deal with this orbit here. Mm, could we, like, shift that over? I feel like this isn't sufficiently polar. I mean, I could bring it closer to Val, but it doesn't matter. We're gonna scan Val. And closer probably means we are more likely to lose communication at periapsis. That should be good enough. Stable polar... I'm not polar? No, the, the orbit information doesn't tell me what inclination I'm at. That doesn't look polar? Hmm. Well, maybe that'll do, I don't know. Okay, are we polar now? There we go. Okay, we got the Val orbital survey done. There we go. Let's see if we can do Leif 2 while we're at it. I think I'll make that our wrap-up goal here. 
got 964 meters per second. Is that good enough? This is a tough orbit to exit from to get to Lathe, I think. Or not. <laughs> Maybe not. Mm. Yep. You know, that didn't look too bad. Right there. Well, we don't want to have more than one tangency if we want to make this a low burn when we get there. Whoa, that's complicated. Okay, that that's probably okay right there. Maybe. Okay, that's not affecting my approach around Leith at all, so let's wait. Okay, do we have a Leith approach at all? Or is it lying? I mean, this can't actually result in an encounter. Did we go right through the encounter? What happened exactly? Oh, there we go. At some point, we're gonna encounter Lathe. Whatever, we, maybe we can just fix it there. Well, that's 400 already. So that's 125, and then if we wanna tilt it... How's that gonna... how is that gonna be? Uh, let's do it the other way. Five hundred. Uh, it's not looking great. Hmm. And this will be too high on the Apple Apps side for the scanner. Well, looks like we couldn't quite. We'll try and get it into orbit around Lath, but I don't think we can use its scanning abilities around Lath. Oh, we don't have com comms at periapsis. Let's see if we pick it up again. Oh, there we go. Well, like, we're in orbit, but we are not... ...sufficiently in orbit. Could we, do, like, do a light arrow break? Do you suppose? But then we, we want to change the inclination, what's the point? Hmm. We could try and land it. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? No crash. Why crash? The uh, the, uh, the antenna will probably rip off though. And we'll probably be like out of communication or something. What are the chances? Uh, let me just double check. I mean, inclination change. You know, I think we can actually do our inclination thing. Oh, gosh darn it. You guys aren't gonna like that. But then we won't be able to bring it down unless we're actually in the atmosphere. Okay, we'll, we'll just scratch it. It'll be fine. Some other time we'll scan late. Uh, we'll need to pull it down more than that. Let's try and be gentle. I don't know how deep I want to get it into the atmosphere. Here we go. Can we get Lathe atmospheric science? I left everything out. Well, we lost the antenna. I mean, the antenna is still visible, it's just broken, I think. Yeah, broken. So, whatever happens, happens. So what's left? The engine's left. 
Obviously the solar panels broke. And the antenna broke. If we had used uh, you know, the, the relay antenna that's always open, that would have been fine. It's gonna smack into the water pretty hard. For science! Smack! <laughs> Alright. 